Al-Kindi was the first formal ph philosopher of Islam and the foremost philosopher of, of pure Arab ancestry. He was born in 801 and died in 873 AD. Al-Kindi defined falsafa, an Arabic word derived from the Greek word for philosophy, as, quote, knowledge of things as they are in reality, according to human capacity, end of quote. Truth, he claimed, is, uh, is universal and supreme, and the truths of religion and philosophy are in accord. Al-Kindi's name is constantly mentioned in the world of music theory. At that time, the science of music was one of the courses of the quadrivium. He published 36 books on a variety of diseases, medicines, health and sickness, diet, brain, stomach, heart, zoology, chemistry and astronomy. This is a partial list of subjects and does not include anything that he had written on music theory or philosophy. Ibn Talmid al-Baghdadi was a Christian from Baghdad. He studied medicine and learned Syriac, Greek and Persian languages. He did great translations in the subject of medicine and wrote in and from the languages he learned. I will conclude this special segment with a short and very interesting poem that he wrote about his medical career. Muwaffaq Abdel Latif al-Baghdadi was born in Baghdad in 1162. After studying philosophy, theology, philology, and al alchemy, he traveled to Damascus, Cairo, and other cities. After journeying in Anatolia and making the pilgrimage to Mecca, he returned to Baghdad and died there in 1231. He was a man of great originality, of character, and a scholar of independent thought. He was also a man who made fierce attacks on colleagues and on his idols Avicenna or Ibn Sina and uh, the scientists, uh, other scientists of al alchemy. Abdul Latif al-Baghdadi's visit to Egypt, Egypt gave him the opportunity to see the numerous skeletons of people who died from starvation. He observed that Galen the Greek and the other doctors could scarcely have had so good an opportunity to study anatomy. At one place near Cairo, a large amount of human bones lay piled Abdel Latif counted more than 2,000 skulls. When he looked at the form of the bones and the joints as, they were, as the way they were formed, he found that the lower jaw consists of one piece, not two, as Galen the Greek had taught. He argued that if the lower jaw consisted of two parts connected by a joint, this joint would be visible at least in old bones because the disintegration of the bones appears first at the joints. Unfortunately, Abdul Latif's discovery remained unknown and was not mentioned in any medical work written after his time. Had this discovery not been published in a book about the geography of Egypt, it would have probably remained unknown till this very day. It is important to note that Ibn Sina, or as known in the West, Avicenna, who was born in Afshana near Bukhara in 980, Ibn Rushd, who was born in Cordova in 1126, and Ibn Maymun, who was born in Cordova in 1135, were not Arab physicians, although often categorized in the same list with Arab doctors, with the exception of Al Maymun, who was a Spanish Jew. The rest are Muslims, but not Arabs. There are other Arab doctors that became famous in Andalusia, or today's Spain. 
Damascus, Baghdad, or Cairo after the fall of Baghdad and the end of the Abbasid era in 1258 AD. Among these doctors are Ibn Nafis, who was born in a village near Damascus and died in 1288, and Ibn Zuhr, who was born in Seville in 1091 from a family of scholars who came originally from Arabia and settled at the beginning of the 10th century in Jativa, east of Spain. In the 13th century, the Damascus doctor Ibn Nafis questions the blood's movement. He taught medicine in Damascus and Cairo and wrote several commentaries on hypocrites in which it appears he explained the material in a scholarly manner. Ibn Nafis not only memorized the Qanun of Ibn Sina or Avicenna, but also commented on it in a large work. The following is a quote from Manfred Allman's book, Islamic Medicine, and it reads, Ibn Nafis, who taught medicine in Damascus and Cairo, did also summarize Hanun of Ibn Sina and he mentioned the following about the blood's movement when the blood has been refined in the ventricle it must reach the left ventricle where the pneuma or ruh is formed but between these two ventricles there is no passage because the substance of the heart is here compact in it there is neither a visible passage, as some suppose, nor an invisible passage which would serve to carry the blood through, as Galen thought, because the pores, masamat, of the heart are closely placed here, and its substance is firm. Thus this blood, when it has been refined, must certainly reach the lungs by the arterial vein so that it can spread out in their substance and mix with the air so that its finest constituents can be clarified and so that it can then reach the venous artery and from there the left ventricle. Manfred Allman continues that with these words Ibn Nafis described for the first time the circulation of the lungs but he gained his knowledge not on the basis of systematic physiological research but by plain logical deduction derived from the knowledge about the Im impenetrability the impenetrability of the septum like to conclude this special segment on Arab contributions to science with Tilmid al-Baghdadi's interesting poem as I promised. In Arabic it says, Bizujajataini qata'tu umri wa alayhuma awwaltu dahri Bizujajatin muli'at bihibrin wa zujajatin muli'at bihamrin فَبِذَا أَثْبُتُ حُكْمَتِي وَبِذَا أَزِيلُ هُمُومُ صَدْرِي It means, with two vessels I spent my life, and upon them my error depended. One vessel was filled with ink, the other with wine. With this I document my wisdom, and with that I forget my sorrow. Thank you.